is Robbie Thompson. You live only five blocks away from school, but it takes you three or four hours to get home because you know there's no one there waiting for you. Your father, he died when you were a baby. Your mother, well, she finishes work at the store every day at 5 p.m. But somehow or other, it's always later before she gets home. Often, much later. In the past couple of years, you've learned that your home life isn't like that of other kids you know. You're worried. You're afraid this is all your fault. That your mother doesn't come home because she doesn't like to be around you. That she doesn't love you. You want your mother to love you. Because if she doesn't love you, your own mother, who is going to love you? It can't be her fault, because she likes other people, lots of other people. People who are a lot of fun, a million laughs. She'd much rather be out somewhere with those people than home with you. You do everything you can to make her love you. When you're alone, you try to take care of yourself. You fix your own supper. Later, you'll put yourself to bed. Every way you know how, you try to be a good boy. You are seven years old. What's that, Robbie? Just on the merest chance that your mother might be home for dinner tonight, you've made a sandwich for her, too. You keep on trying, don't you, Robbie? Trying to be the son you think your mother wants. Hello, Mom. Hello, Robbie. I'll get it. Hello? Who? Bill. Oh, sure. Sure, I remember you. Met you at Tony's. <laughs> Million laughs. What, tonight? No, I can't have dinner with you tonight. Okay, tomorrow night. Eight o'clock? Fine. Bye, Bill. Any messages? No. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Steve, I'm on my way. Well, I'm practically out of the door. Oh, you made a sandwich for me, too. Well, wrap it up and take it to school with you for lunch tomorrow. And heat up that soup in the icebox. Oh, and Robbie. If anybody calls, be sure and get the name right. It was only a tiny little fire, but for days and days, you aren't allowed to forget it. $2.98. One month old. Now it looks good for his dust rags. Oh, Robbie, Robbie, can't you ever do anything right? Answer that and tell him I'll be right out. Hiya, son. Your mother home? Yes. You after the brass ring tonight, Steve? You're ten minutes early. Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Could we speak with you privately, please? But I was... Robbie, go into the kitchen and get your supper. And close the kitchen door.
there's a little fire. So what? The neighbor's jealous old vats. They've been gunning for me ever since the day I moved in here. But, Mrs. Thompson, you said the school principal Is it my fault that Robbie can't learn to read? It's the school's responsibility. That's what we pay him taxes for. But, Mrs. Thompson, All you... right. So I leave the kid alone at night sometimes. Look, I got a right to a life of my own, haven't I? I gotta have some fun, haven't I? I spoke with his mother about dropping him back a grade, but she just shrugged and said she didn't care. Robbie really has a good mind, but he's so convinced he can't do anything right, he just doesn't even try. How about a foster home? A substitute father and mother who'd give him some genuine old-fashioned love. The only love Robbie wants right now is from his own mother. What worries me is the way he keeps all his unhappy feelings inside himself. He's like a kettle piling up steam. And when there's no more room, well, he might lapse into mental illness. Or like the kettle, blow off the lid. Do something really violent. Perhaps a children's home would be the answer. Where he could be part of a group, yet wouldn't have to be close to anyone until he was ready. Yes. You like chewing gum, don't you, Robbie? So you don't dislike the two quiet gentlemen who call on you one lonesome evening. How's the gum, son? Okay. Hop along, Cassidy. Okay. How about your new shoes? Okay. Hmm, space cadets, baseball, everything's okay. Is there anything you don't think is okay? Is there, Robbie? Me. I'm not okay. Well, why do you say that, son? My mom. She doesn't like me the way I am. Robbie, you don't know it yet, but your mother is making certain arrangements. You see, the two quiet gentlemen and the school principal and a lot of other people have uh, convinced her that in time and with the proper help, you may lose those feelings of guilt and failure that are crippling you. Who's she? Skipper, this is a visitor. Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson is a visitor. Mrs. Thompson is a visitor. Mrs. Thompson, there's just one more thing. Oh? All of Robbie's problems aren't going to disappear at once. We're going to need lots of help from you. Oh, yes, uh, about the money. Well, I'll do the best I can. What do they do there? I don't know when alcoholics and all and see it. Well, neither do I. But my mother gets something out of it. Last time she called, she sounded lots better. I don't think anything could help my mother. Now, uh, let me get this straight. You keep the children here all summer long, even while school's out? Mm hmm And uh, after Robbie's had his visit, when can I bring him to stay? We've planned his visit for Wednesday. Oh, good. Well, then I'll bring him with his things on Thursday. I'll bring him Thursday morning. Early Thursday morning. You know, I was afraid to have Robbie. I was afraid he'd spoil my figure. Goodbye, and thank you so much. It's early Thursday morning, Robbie. Yesterday you had your visit to the home. They tried to explain it all to you. You're coming here to live so they can help you change your feelings about yourself. And you said you understood. Only you don't understand, do you, Robbie? You're coming in with me, ain't you, Mom? Well, darling, there simply isn't time. They're nice here. They'll do everything they can for you. When are you coming to see me? Look what I've got for you. A nice new shiny fire engine. Is that nice? Sunday, Mom. You'll come Sunday. Well, hello there, Robbie. You're all ready for him, good. 
Well, I have to tear now. I'll be late for the store. But you've got a very special friend in her place. Mrs. Allen, your house mother. This is the bed that you're going to sleep in. It'll be your bed. Pussy! Robbie, this is Skipper. You want us to help you unpack? No. You want to unpack yourself, Robbie? No. What's the matter? What's aching the rut? Maybe he just don't feel like unpacking. Get in a big fight. Oh, fire and I'm going to get back here. Let's get back over here where we belong. Johnny only wanted to take a look at your nice new fire engine. I don't want anybody to touch my fire engine. Leave my stuff alone. Leave me alone. What a jacket. Let's leave him alone. I know, Robbie. There are times when we have to be alone. I'll be in my room if you want me. You're alone, Robbie. Alone and crushed and heartbroken. That Mrs. Allen, the house mother, you don't trust her. You don't trust any of them. Weeks go by, you still don't trust Mrs. Allen or any of them. These people of the home whose only thought is to help you realize that the tragic things of the past were not your fault. And that it's not because you're no good that you haven't heard a word from your mother. How could we help a child like Robbie? After all these weeks and still not a spark of response from him. You know, he's never really had anybody interested in him before. He still thinks he's all wrong. Not worth loving. It may take a long time to convince him. But when one person breaks through... Speaking of breaking through, I think that's another window. I think it's the front door. It sounds like it. Like a I want a boy and a girl down. A boy and a girl. Another one that thinks good. Oh, Robbie! This is the day we get our allowances. Hurry up and get your dime. So for many, many nights you have climbed miserably into your little bed, alone in your heart. You still stay shut up in your shell, especially with Mrs. Allen. 
She acts as if she likes you, of course. But she can't really like you. So you keep yourself from getting hurt by not liking her. Can I have a job? An extra job, please? You certainly can. Eight cents an hour. I saved all my allowances 26 times, but I need more. For something special? Yeah, a house. A house for my mother. Maybe if I buy my mother a house, maybe then she'll want me to come and live in it with her. What kind of a job would you like? Sweeping? Something like that? I think I'd like washing windows. It's a deal. Want to read it? I... I don't like to read. Here, I'll read it to you. Here's what she says. My hurt will be over soon, darling. Very soon. Always remember I love you. See? So now I expect I'll go home for Christmas with her. What do I care? You think you're so smart going home for Christmas. Well, so am I, so am I. I want an interview right here. Well, of course, Robbie. What's on your mind? I hate girls. Is my mother coming to take me home for Christmas? I don't know, Robbie. Of course, my mom's awful busy. Yes, she is. And that's why she never writes or comes to see me. What can I do for you? If I write my mom a letter, will you print the address on it so it'll be right? I'll be glad to. But I'm going to write the letter myself, even if it takes me two weeks. But it takes more than two weeks, Robbie. And many other things besides writing letters can happen in that length of time. Robbie, Skipper's had some very bad news. Her mother died in the hospital this morning. Skipper's going home for Christmas. That's what Skipper thought, Robbie. But when her mother wrote and said the hurt would soon be over, she was just trying to tell her that she wasn't going to get well. Skipper is in Mrs. Glenn's office. She wants to see you. Is... is she trying? Yes. Skipper? She needs you, Robbie. Till Christmas now, Robbie. No.
Bobby. You have such good taste. Look, here's a letter for you. Special delivery. What's it say? Read it. Mm -hmm. Dear Robbie, received your letter. Of course, you can come home for Christmas. I'll pick you up Christmas Eve. She will? She will! It says so here, in the letter. I told you so. I can make wishes come true. <laughs> Care of herself. I only hope mine went to her AA meeting last night. When I'm here, I remember only the nice things about my mother. But when I'm home... Merry Christmas. Think you'll have a Christmas tree? Sixty-five feet high. Will you hang your stocking by the fireplace? Stocking ten feet long. One of my mother's. Mine you smell good. Anna had five baths today. Thing. Oh, yes, yes, I think we'd better. I've got to leave in two hours, you know. It's getting late, Robbie. The kids going home for Christmas have all been picked up. All but you. Telephone for you, Robbie. It's your mother. to change our plans. We can't spend Christmas together. We... We can't? We'll make it some weekend soon. Bye, Robbie. Oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Fire department, all the resources of an organized community called into action for one small boy who wishes he was dead.
Bobby, won't you please take that rope and tie it around you? Well, then I'll just have to come down and get you. Anybody comes near me, I'll jump off! Bobby! Talk this over. Where is he? Where is he? He's down there on a ledge. He won't try to help us. He says he'll jump off if anybody comes down to get him. Maybe I could talk to him. Oh, no. Not on that ladder. Oh, he don't hold me. I just finished my nine day diet. just one of the legion of children helped by your community chest. Give every child a chance. Give more this year. 